golf over the weekend, the British Open it was, and uh, I just thought, why not, it's, a, it's in a really beautiful place and it's a really nice little island with a stand of trees in this loch, which is Loch Lomond basically, famous place in Scotland, and when I went on holiday I went there and it is a majestic place, I took some photographs and a bit of, bit of sketching and stuff, and uh, I've come back and I'm going to paint it now for you all. So let's get started. I'm going to use first of all some straight black and get a good pile of it. I want to mix a load of this. So I'm going to get black, ultramarine blue, not too much, just a bit, about that much, nowhere near as much as the black. I'm just going to do it to show you the proportions that I'm using. And then a lizard and crimson. S same amount of lizard and crimson as you've got with the blue. That's somewhere near. And then get all them colours and mix them together. Just want to get a tiny little bit of Van Dyke brown just on the end of the knife. Look how small that is. I'm not getting a lot. It's just to, uh, it works as knocks the colour back and it stops it being quite so vibrant, it naturalises it, just a tiny little bit of Van Dyke Brown in there, you'd be surprised at the difference that that one little thing makes, it stops it from being garish, and looking unnatural, sometimes give a lovely hue as well, I'm trying to mix this really well you see with a knife, you notice how I'm picking the paint up, and then I'm putting it back down again. Pick up, pop down. There we go. Somebody's making a racket outside. It's always like this. Where I live is a big main road in front of it. So it's really difficult. <laughs> and you always end up with people using chainsaws and stuff like that. <laughs> nightmare and normally if I'm doing a video uh, a DVD I'd just edit it out <laughs> beauty, is a compu beauty of computers so yeah there we go mix that colour up nicely now if you don't mix it up well enough you just won't have it, it won't work I'm just going to get a bit more blue and a bit more black to that it's gone very red and I want a, a, a red hue slightly just not over the top it's, um, that's looking good I'll double check that I've mixed it right because it's really important that you mix this well with a knife see how long I've taken mixing it it's because if you leave any of the colours in there that are unmixed <coughs> it won't Sometimes it's nice to get the variety and the, the variation, different tones. With this painting I'm doing now, it's a two-toned painting, so I don't want it to have any areas where it's just got loads of blue. I've just got loads of uh, crimson. I want it to have a good balance. It's much more black in there than anything, as you saw. I need a good pile of that. We're going to use this throughout the painting just at different grades by mixing with the liquid white it always helps clean my knife off a few good little tips for you all today but also I'm going to actually talk a little bit about myself because uh, I want you guys to know a bit more about who I am where I've come from and things that I've done right I'm going to start off with a one inch brush for this guy. One little tip I want to give you. You notice the difference in the length of the bristles. Whoops, I want to really show you that. The difference in the length of the bristles from one brush to the other. These short ones are really good for stippling. The brand new ones, which aren't wore out, 
which are longer, they're better for blending. So I reserve them brushes for stippling, because I've worn them down, I've been using them that much. You actually get shorter and shorter as I go. <laughs> I have to keep buying new brushes just for blending. Right, so I'm just going to go into that colour and just stain the bristles. It's important not to get too much paint at this stage. Subtle effects at first. I just want to stain the bristles. Should be a yummy colour that we're going to be using. And then just up in here, a little cloud, right up in the top edge of there. So I'm just going to apply some of that colour in. Crisscross drops. I've got my uh, picture, a photograph actually on the computer, so you'll notice me looking back quite a bit at the photograph because I want it to be quite accurate. The memories of my holiday then will all be in this painting. Now I just want to bring a little bit just on here, leave that light area. blend that you see. I'm going to come back with a clean brush and blend it just behind it and then as we go what I can do is just get a bit of titanium white just get some titanium white right so with that same brush just tap in some titanium white just to make the colour lighter so I used it raw at first because I wanted it darker up there. Now down in here I want it to be quite a bit lighter. And I, I've got a cloud which is basically blending off really softly but it comes right through. Right through like this and it actually meets up to there. Cool. Really nice is this one. It's going to be a lot of fun to do for you all. Now that should have streamed its way through there a bit. And then just down in here now you've picked up liquid wire. I can get a bit more white. Tap into that again and it'll get even lighter still. make it much lighter and then just underneath just underneath here we've got a, a really light cloud which you can just see only just because this is the brightest area just in here and then there's a couple of bits in the sky it's up in here Now the whole idea now is to just come back with a blender brush and make all this sit really softly. So I'll come back with a, a one and a quarter inch and just blend this out now. Yeah, like I was saying, I'm going to talk a bit about myself and let you all get to know me a bit. As a kid, I always loved painting. Always loved painting. But it was mainly watercolours and pencil drawings that I did as a child. I always enjoyed drawing with pencils and doing... To be honest, I were always into painting uh, dogs and stuff like that because I always loved greyhounds and lurches. I found, found them gorgeous animal. And my uncle we used to have some, so I did some drawings early on of his dogs and stuff like that. And it just sparked my interest. My uncle had uh, sparked my interest in nature, just like experiences that I've had as a child sparked my interest in nature. We live in quite a rural area, as you could see in the video I did, where I was showing you around my local area and that. Just to let you know, I'm blending this out first, because I don't want to drag this dark down in here. Just a bit of common sense there. 
to blend it really softly in there. See how soft you can get it when you're doing this blending. And because I want these flowers to have a few streaks in, I'm not doing crisscross strokes as normal. I'm just doing that straightish, so it leaves these little things and stuff going on behind there. And blend this cloud up in the sky because I want that to be really light just up in there. Cool. Yeah, and uh, that's how I got into my art really. I just always used to go up to Uncle Eddie's and he had loads and loads of books with uh, pictures of birds in and different wildlife. And I used to just sit there while I was a child, while they were all talking and drinking. I'd be just sat there doing my little sketches. Basically, teaching myself how to do it by uh, trial and error, really. So that's how I got interested in that. But also, when I was young, I was really, really interested in martial arts. I actually did a lot of competitions. I used to do freestyle karate and uh, different types of kung fu. I was mainly taught doing Thai boxing though, that was the main thing that I did. I did a lot of Thai boxing from the age of about nine years old. About when I started uh, learning how to paint with acrylics and oil paints. And then uh, I carried that on for quite a while. Went into do a bit of boxing. Did a lot of sparring with some professional boxers and just enjoyed doing it and I loved keeping fit. And uh, anyway, I didn't do it as a career, I was more or less doing the boxing just for fun and pleasure. But obviously I had to work. So I was working at first, I worked at a place, a printing company called What Most Printers. But I'll probably get a couple of them guys watching me on here, giving me some dodgy comments. <laughs> but yeah, I had some fun times there, really enjoyed it. And uh, I worked there for about three and a half to four years. Worked my way up to being a printer's assistant. But all that time I was still painting. I always come back to doing my painting, no matter what's happened, I've always stuck with it, you know. It's something I've done and I've enjoyed doing for a long time. So I pride myself on just loving it. It's not something I have to force myself. I look forward to every painting that I do. You know, and the more you look, the more you see, the more you want to create and effects that you're actually seeing out there. And uh, it's amazing. Sometimes in the morning when I go out and I see the sunrise, it just blows my mind. So I love getting these photographs and doing these paintings for you all. It's really nice. Anyhow, as I was saying, I keep <laughs> going back to painting, don't I? Yeah, I did a lot of Thai boxing and stuff like that. Boxing. But then, reality checked. And I thought, right, well, I love my painting. I want to do something with my painting. So, what I did, I saved up quite a bit of money so that I could actually go over to Holland to train to be a an art instructor because I'd seen Bob Ross on TV and I really liked what he did and he taught me a lot actually about landscape painting especially because I always painted in a traditional technique where I learned at school basically but uh, now I use a, ba a balanced mixture of the two really enjoy doing it now I'm just going to get a clean brush and just blast this out anyhow so I went to train to be a Bob Ross instructor and I had an attempt at that young age, probably about 19, no, sorry, I'm wrong. I think I was about 21, 22 when I went to train to be a, a Bob Ross instructor, really young. And uh, for my attributes, I started teaching some young kids, probation, kids who were on probation. And because of the teaching and the work that I did with these kids and the paintings which the kids produced and the way the kids turned out actually as well, I, uh, I got awarded with a Prince's Trust award to go see the Queen and go to Buckingham Palace and all that. 
And it was good. It's kind of the night. I'm not a monarchist, to be honest with you, but we're just nice that what I was doing had been recognised. So, uh, anyhow, I started a business. And I started at that young age. And I was trying to be an art instructor, basically, with no business attribute whatsoever. So, I went for about a year, year and a half, and it didn't pull off. I ended up uh, not being able to carry on with the business, so what I did, I had to shut it down and I just taught in my spare time, I was teaching in my spare time and working. Uh, actually, in the latter parts, I started working as a chef. And uh, it was really good fun because I love cooking. So it was, it was a hell of a lot of good fun. And I want to change it for the world. It was something I really enjoyed. And I still do enjoy it. <laughs> I cook all the time now. You know what those men are like, especially on the barbecue. Can't beat a good barbie. And then, as I was working as a chef, I used to have to travel quite a distance to where I worked. So what I had to do was uh, walk up a really bad, steep hill. And it's a, a real killer of the steep hill as well. Now, as I was doing this and going to work, I actually realised that I was having some real trouble actually getting it up this hill. And uh, it was almost as though something was happening, I don't know, it was like a shaking feeling as I was walking, my le leg had shaked. And uh, I was getting all these funny feelings in my right arm. Anyway, I worked for a few months and worked my way through it, strolling up that hill every day, struggling away, trying to get there. And then, uh, after a while, you know, a few months worth of it, it started to get really bad. And it really bothered me and it started to worry me actually so I went and sought some advice. I had a, a really bad feeling. In a way I did I knew more or less what were happening with me because uh, the effects of what I were getting, I was checking them out online and stuff and uh, it didn't look good. So basically to cut a long story short, I uh, I went and got some checks done by a doctor and I found out that I had a brain tumour and that I had terminal cancer. So at the end of the day I had to go into I had to quit my job. I had to uh, go into hospital and have a biopsy done, a brain operation, so they could get a biopsy to find out whether it was cancer or what it was. So anyway, I had this operation, turned out that it was terminal cancer, but I didn't find that out straight away obviously. When I come out of hospital uh, after the operation, I couldn't even walk, it was terrible, it was the worst time of my life. 